person and I love you unconditionally. Fuck's sake, man. <clears throat> Some people just can't get it through their heads that... <sighs> anyway, anyway. So, Mike, check. The serpent seethes soothingly in slacks. The serpent seethes soothingly in slacks. All right. Levels are good. Okay. This week's kind of heavy. Putting that out there now. You know, depression, isolation, desolation, dedication to these things are the, the brain's own poisonous bile. It's when loneliness turns to onlyness without a sense of self, compassion or love, the, the mass of electric gelatin that powers our hopes and dreams tends to lose both. The problem with complete disconnection is that one tends to forget a connection was originally intended and so forgets that it's wholly not only possible, but inevitable. The future, be it years, months, days, hours, or seconds away, is, is the beautiful unknown of us all. It's what drives the need to see our massive ball of nuclear fission, the, the very same one that feeds life itself, rise another day. The world in which we live is really, it's a terrifying experience. And your only ability is the power of free thought and free will. And when you realize that you're a single person in a sea of 7.442 billion, a grain just standing completely and utterly alone on this beach of a planet we've named Earth. Thing is, just because you've only the power to decide and think for yourself doesn't mean that there's no meaning to find the self of others. There needn't be a single similarity surmise between someone seen as strange, even seen sensationally so. Because a stranger, no matter how different, can and inevitably will see the person inside the layers of manufactured personality, to the core of who you are. In, in simplest terms, just you. Your taste in music, cinema verite, cat or dog, boxer or brief, Ford or Chevy, Garfield or Heathcliff, Beatles or Stones, Curly or Shemp, Trek or Wars, Pokey or Digi, po Buck Pinocchio or Totoro. Original versions of foreign films of the far, far, far inferior, inevitable American rehash, and last but most important, potato or tomato. When you realize that these differences matter fuck all in the grandest scheme of things, being nothing more than personal likes, not personality, you can find the down deep. The downest, deepest that actually matters. Can this person stand your stupid Heathcliff-loving ass for even a second? I mean, really. What the fuck is he? A mob boss? A ladies' man? Am I for one second supposed to believe that the jackass is supposed to be the smooth operator in the alleyway? I mean, Garfield's not only more realistic, he's relatable. He's a cat that loves lasagna, he hates Mondays, and... He's learned to barely tolerate the incompetence that surrounds him at every fucking turn. Hey, I'm kidding. You can like that a-hole fucking Heathcliff if you want. You know what? I still dig you even if you do. Because your love of that obviously challenged cat does not exclusively make you your love of that inbred horror show of terrible lazy writing and garbage. You can and will find another out there that will see the most impressive, inter interesting person alive when they look into your eyes. Someone more than willing to make up for the years of you thinking how your love of My Little Pony is completely acceptable even though you're a 48-year-old man that works as the guy that mops up in the champagne room at the feedlot, which is the place that your sleazy boff, boss, um, what is his name, uh, Pavlor, bought. That was the old grain depository off I-95 in the least third populated Iowan town that he totally had plans to rename to be the newest, sexiest club this side of Des Moines. But after extensive dancer interviews, he really didn't see a need. Well, your sick, disgusting fetish might make me throw up a little time every time I fucking think of it, but... I mean, I just did now. But... 
there's somebody out there that's going to think that you're the most fascinating, beautiful person on earth. I can't say that I believe in soulmates because if I did, I'd be a little worried if only for the fact that I lost my soul to a Vietnamese kid in a poker game in sixth grade science class. Yeah, Tran, I'm well aware that you still have the piece of paper that bequeathed my mortal soul to you. How you beat a pair of fours, I'll never know. You probably fucking cheated. But for everybody out there, there's, there's a piece of the puzzle that's going to fit perfectly to yours. You just have to look. And it's probably going to take some time. But you'll find him. No matter how much you jack it to your own Heathcliff fanfiction where he's the submissive to Garfield. I've read it. I mean, it's not terrible. I've completely fucking forgotten how to play it. Right. Yeah, that's what always happens. So, oh, so it doesn't do me any good. But anyway, Chris, you know why we're here today? Do you know what we're going to do? Um, like right now? Bullshit. Right this fucking second? We are here to bring people another fucking wonderful episode of See No, Hear No, Speak No. Oh, the UFOs, the conspiracies, and the murders. I ba bam, now. bingo. That's it. You are correct, sir. And uh, you want to know what today's episode's about? Hell I'm yeah, dying, I do. Dying to fucking tell you. Okay, this is something that has been in uh, my my lexicon of hey, you want to hear some fucking crazy shit forever. Mm-hmm. And but all I know is that this place existed, or that's at least all I did know. And truthfully, Chris, I didn't find out a ton, but I did find out some interesting shit about it nonetheless. Awesome. But we are talking about Aokigahara, which is the um, suicide forest in Japan. Oh, no shit. No shit. It is a gigantic fucking 12 square mile uh forest and it's such a 12 miles it's such Good a Lord. it's such a densely uh it's so densely packed with trees that people actually call it uh a jukai which means uh sea of trees oh wow like it is seriously <clears throat> this it's it's at the foot of mount fuji and the reason that it's so crazily packed with trees is because uh i think i mean i'll get to it but i think it was its last uh, Mount Fuji's last major eruption mm-hmm. that uh, covered the entire floor of the area around it with uh, volcanic rock. Ah, so I didn't know that. this stuff, after years and years and years, kind of broke down and became the perfect place for this ridiculous forest to pop up. So I think I saw like a little um, piece of this. Uh, talking about this, I think it was on Ancient Aliens, actually, when I first saw it. It was like one of the, uh, maybe, second season or something like that. But, I, mm-hmm. I mean, they they, tell, they talk about it, but they didn't really, you know, go into much. So, I'm, shit, now that you bring it up, I'm super excited to hear about this. That sounds awesome. Like, that's really, that's really the crazy fucking thing about this place, is that it's this, it really is a, a, a destination for people to commit suicide. I mean, it, it's a national park, 
you know it, it's a it's a beautiful just if you see pictures of and or video of this place it's this gorgeous like canopy of trees it 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 looks like a a rainforest jungle like that's how densely populated with these trees it is Holy crap. Where it just blocks out the sun basically and it's just this there's ferns and all this crazy shit all over the place and it's giant trees and it looks like this kind of cool magical japanese place huh. so it's still though a mystery why it's this magnet to people that want to end their lives so creepy yeah cuz there there's some uh there's some thought toward maybe what the uh what the kickstart of people wanting to go there to kill themselves mm-hmm. may have been but each time somebody says uh hey you heard about that like maybe that's why people go to fucking off themselves there the next person is like oh yeah well, oh wait no but people have been doing that there for fucking hundreds of years before that so hundreds it's of just years a, yeah what it, it's it's a really weird thing wow and uh i th- i think before we really get into anything um concrete about the forest itself or anything like that i think we should kind of touch on what suicide really means to the Japanese. Oh, yeah. Because it... Different culture, to, different stuff, yeah. Right, exactly. And for for a long, long time in Japan, uh, all during the olden days, it was basically just practiced by samurai. Mm-hmm. And it was, um, you know, they were honor-bound to commit uh, seppuku mm-hmm. or uh, harakiri, harakiri, as a lot of people know it as, um, if they had uh, dishonored anyone, basically, especially their lords. Yep. But they or would, even just they, lost in battle. Know, that was right. Yeah, absolutely, that was a, absolutely. That's crazy. Uh, they would have you know mass seppuku. Uh, just hey, you guys are on the losing end. You lost honor. And then they would kneel down and gut themselves. Now, if you were a, a person in high standing, or if you were just honor bound to do it, but hadn't actually done anything that terrible, because sometimes uh, samurai would do this to save face for family members mm-hmm. or other people in high standing, like uh, uh, a top family samurai would... Uh, commit seppuku to save face for his master wow. and things like that. So people in that position were usually afforded a second who, after the samurai would take the short blade and cut his belly, the second would then quickly chop his head off yeah. uh, with a long sword. That way there, there was no real, I mean, there's suffering because you just gutted yourself, but you don't have to sit there and bleed out while you watch your innards fall to the floor. Fuck, you know? that's so crazy. I mean, so their the, saving grace, I think, with that is just how fucking sharp these swords were and probably oh, how yeah. easily they cut through them. But, oh, my God. I, I mean, I'm just picturing, like, you know, I, I know paper's a lot, a lot more coarse, but every time, you know, being in the kitchens and stuff for a long time, every time you cut yourself, good lord, it's that same, yeah. it's that same scenario of like being in a car crash or being in a fight or some shit like that. If you're not trained to do certain things, like your your brain just it, it, it basically um, it, it chooses what uh, what to take in and what to block out you know in that in that quick instance and then you like replay everything in slow motion and the feeling of something slicing through you even into and and not paper cuts we're saying we're talking like into the meat yeah because i've worked in kitchens and i almost cut the the tip of my left thumb off because i happen to be staring at a new waitress's ass Mm -hmm. while i was chopping Mm -hmm. chopping sausage Mm -hmm. and uh (laughs) and i just I was cutting, 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 and I looked over to to what I was cutting, and there was blood all over everything. You and I was like, "Wait, was this fasted. sausage not? <laughs> was this was this shit not cooked all the way?" And I was like, "Nope, that's uh, that's the tip of my thumb kind of hanging off." That's Jason. It's not and, been uh, cooked at all. Exactly. You can't serve that. So, and th- the best part about that is, um, 
that my boss was down the street drunk, so um, I had no relief, and he wouldn't let me shut down. So I wrapped my finger in a paper towel and finished the night of work. That's a so kitchen man. Never got that. Never got that stitched up or nothing. But I did. Uh, I did earn some points with that uh, new waitress whom I was staring at. So, so that was <laughs> nice. good. But yeah, you're 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 absolutely right. When you, it doesn't matter how prepared you are for it. Uh, when it happens as an accident, sometimes your brain won't even register the pain from that super sharp blade going so deep into you. Mm -hmm. But when you're sitting down with the intention of committing suicide with this sword in this very particular way, I can't help to imagine that you would feel every micron of that short sword going into your belt. Well, dude, I mean, we are, uh, like, we're a species, or, or just life in general is, self -pre is all about self-preservation, so there's a lot of, of conviction and, you know what I mean, I, I mean, for lack of a better word in my vocabulary right now, strength that, that a person has to go through just within their head to even come close to actually committing suicide. And that's just all these quick, you know, types of things, a fucking electrocution right. or a gunshot or some shit like that. I can't even imagine the type of mental uh, battle one would have to go through to literally gut themselves and it's not like they do it quickly uh, yeah they sit there a ceremonial it, right. type of thing like you gotta mm -hmm. you gotta look good There's you gotta a wear a special process. outfit and shit like yep man and you have to you have to bring the 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 gi off your shoulders and wrap it around you and have your belly presented and ready and wrap your fucking the blade of your short sword in some cloth and jam it in and and saw it one way and fucking then crazy. yank it out and Oh uh, yeah, it, it's nuts. And like you said, those are people who are honor bound to commit this act to 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 end their existence on Earth because they believe in their code so strongly that because someone that they it, maybe not even that they trust and believe in because I'm sure there were <laughs> there were many a time where somebody just with a higher station made somebody kill themselves just. Because, uh -huh. but yet yeah, where you believe in this code so much, where just someone with a higher station can tell you, "Hey, you got to kill yourself now," and you got to sit down and fucking kill yourself, basically with a smile. Um, I respect so, the hell out and admire the hell out of that kind of, um, you know, resolve? yeah, man. Like, uh, yeah, I don't. I, Americans don't, I don't have think it. We don't do that. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary in this day and age or in the culture, the, the world culture that, that we've all built, uh, something like that. And I'm not just even saying ritual suicide. I'm saying uh, so, being so uh, entrenched in a philosophy that can mean life or death for yourself Um that's just not even necessary in our day and age anymore. I agree. You know what I mean? So, but, and, and that's where there's, there's differences in how suicide in Japan was handled and is, is handled today. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the only other real, um, I know they have a, a of, really high suicide rate, don't they? Compared to the rest of, yeah, of the be, world. Because they have a ridiculously, um, challenge and goal oriented, uh, society. Uh. They, everyone there needs to have the best job and make them the best money and have the, the, the prettiest wife and girlfriend. And it, it's all about being better than everyone else. And I, I'll get to kind of a, a little thing. Best. Yeah, I'll get to a little thing about that later where there was some pushback against that way of doing things. But that's, uh, that's how the Japanese really, uh, you know, work. And um, it, there's just one, one more little thing about the, the ancient uh, kind of way of suicide there. And this isn't technically suicide, but this also happened in, uh, in uh, Okigahara. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's something called uh, ubastut. And it, that literally translates into uh, abandoning an old woman. Huh. Um, and, and what that was is... Uh, that really poor families would 
basically bring their their elderly relative or like an infirm relative they would carry them to the the mountain or the forest or wherever just some desolate place and they would just drop them off and be like see you wow i was wow i I didn't even take the time to hope that it wasn't going to be exactly what i thought it was but right wow because uh because that's that's exactly what it was they would drop their infirm and elderly to uh to just die by dehydration or starvation or just exposure that's to fucking the insane. elements um yeah just as a form of euthanasia there there's um, actually a community down here really close to um the area of florida that i live and i forget what it's called now off the top of my head but when you when you ride by and you see the sign for it like i remember oh that's that place but it's like a it's like <laughs> a, a, a elderly community you know, it's not it's not right. a, a a home or anything like that. It's it's literally a community. So everybody buys what into Florida the place. Is known for really, and yeah. and yeah, it, but it's it's such a large neighborhood or whatever. Everybody rides around on golf carts and shit. But what <laughs> what it is, they each have this uh, golf ball, this colored golf ball on their on their you know like advertising basically on their is golf that, cart. Is that their their sexual preference? Yes. Mm. Yes, their preference and status and all that. And let me tell you, these old folks party and all of that fun stuff. There's old sloppy, wrinkly orgies going on constantly. Mm. But there's also an explosion of uh, STD action going on. And it's just the most wretched thing I can imagine. (laughs) What? What? Shut up. <laughs> well, I mean, oh you know. Jesus Christ! No, be, I mean, really, because I mean, you're just you're just making me hard, Chris. So we got shit to look forward con- to, you know. I got I got to concentrate here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of STD ridden elderly communities, yeah, uh, maybe we should party in the woods, uh, bro. Ma- I'm not saying we re- completely revisit uh, Ubastus, but. You know, maybe we think about it. But, of course, the people that are there uh, boning it up in their 90s are the ones that have money. And uh, so they're not the ones that we would have been uh, dropping off in the woods to die anyway. Wow, wow. So, so those, those two things that, that we just talked about, um, they're really... Uh, oh, uh, by the way, the uh, Ubastut was also sometimes uh, forced among... Forced for families to by uh, practice by feudal officials oh, wow. in times uh, in times of uh you know famine and things like that they're like well we just po- we don't possibly have enough to uh to to feed everybody so uh take all your old people up the hill and uh leave them there wouldn't you think that seppuku sort of scenario would be like applicable there too like honoring the family by mm-hmm. allowing everyone to live in your place Type of shit. Well, I mean, I mean, Grant, except, you can't, except, you, you can't, you can't. I, I imagine you can't expect an old person to sit down and do this to themselves. But you know, at least the that second guy who just like slices their head off real quick, like, okay, mm-hmm. we love you, Grandma. Let's burn some incense. You know what I mean? Like, give you. I you hear know. but but you know the the really funny thing about that is that um, these these old people that were just being dropped off to uh, to die of exposure. If they had even sat down and committed seppuku on their own accord, I guarantee you that their families uh, would be punished, huh. uh, most likely by death, for uh, assuming the the actions of a, a samurai. Oh, which, uh, okay. which was so it was like an exclusive a, thing, huh? Exactly. Oh, yeah, they they were the uh, the pop stars of the day, and that's like. Your grandma coming out with a you know a diss track, and uh, you know telling everybody it's gonna be on BET tonight, and when it's not, like everybody's really upset and they want you to drop her off in the woods. Man, if only Justin Bieber would have committed seppuku on that hotel balcony after everybody saw his dick, it just it would have been epic. Why you gotta be jealous, dude? Come on, let the dude have a dick. I mean that's fine. He can have one and all, but uh, you know. <laughs> I, I was, you know, you're, you're, Chris is like, but why is it gotta be so nice? Your cute little Ugh. tattoos and everything, and you know, it, it would have <laughs> just been cool if he'd have 
sat down on that balcony. You're saying it'd have been cool if he'd have had like a micro penis. Disembowel himself and. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. All right. Let yeah. We're gonna we're gonna step right over the fact that <laughs> Justin Bieber has a glorious penis and go to uh, the the difference between suicide in Japan then being uh, both necessity and uh, you know honor bound code is that today um they do it more because they're they're just unable to adapt to society um and that the society being that that crazy goal oriented life that everybody lives mm -hmm. it's it's pressure 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 oh, man. pressure I pressure, can only pressure. Imagine. and and yeah like really i mean i shit this is what i do here i mean i i take some silly pictures every once in a while but for the most part i fucking make podcasts and uh i wouldn't be able to do this shit in japan mm -hmm. they'd fucking run me out for being late i don't know i'd have to at least collect manga too oh yeah I i'm sure we'd be scum <laughs> of the earth over there to their to the to the people who actually uh you know um um, um really adhere to that whole societal um you know structure oh ab yeah absolutely yeah we'd be scum absolutely absolutely so um it, now We'll get to the forest itself since we kind of talked about what drives uh, the the modern day <clears throat> uh, Japanese person to commit suicide. And and just so everybody knows, uh, it's not just the Japanese that commit suicide here. Mm -hmm. It is it is a world destination. It it really it's made Wait, a what, name really? for itself. Now I I don't have um, the the Japanese government doesn't keep hard data about the suicides in the forest. Well, I'm sure they keep the hard data about it. When they find but they them. Don't re they don't release it. I gotcha. Um, because they don't want to glorify mm -hmm. it. It's already been glorified plenty. So they don't want that to happen anymore. So they're not, they don't release numbers uh, anymore. They don't release uh, demographics or nationalities. Um, but suffice it to say that I mean, it, yes, it's, it's definitely 90% uh, Japanese that go there to do it. But when word started getting out that there's this, this mystical uh, uh, Yuri-filled forest in Japan where people go to, to kill themselves peacefully, um, you know, I, people liked the idea and went there for that specific reason. Um, Such an interesting concept, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I can't... I can't begin to even fathom what someone that is even contemplating contemplating suicide what their mind would be going through because I've never I've never been there. But uh, not it, not it, not with any kind of conviction I haven't. No. No, it it's got to be a complete and utter loss of of self. Mm -hmm. That you have to have absolutely no want or need to see the next morning i mean well that that's the main that that's the you know the most um what you call it i don't know statistically I, what what yeah. usually happens but uh, exactly. you know. it's it's a com it's a complete it's a complete and utter breakdown and and just loss of belief in everyone and everything around you to ever be happy again but like and i knew while bringing this topic up that we would uh you know hit some pretty dark notes on this episode mm -hmm. um but i don't want to get too into the the psychology of suicide right. because uh, neither frankly neither of us are uh <laughs> we're, we're, neither of us are educated in it and we we don't have the right to really talk about it fair enough um, yeah and, and it's just it's it's dark and it would get real sad real fast and it would all be speculation anyway and i like fun speculation i don't like wondering what drives people to off themselves mm -hmm. you know so Agreed. i'm gonna get i'm gonna get a little analytical here with you i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you a little factual actual shit about the forest itself it's actual and, uh, and factual is everything uh, also sad as factual yeah, see, you gotta let me add the line. You can't do all three lines yourself, because then there's just everybody's like, Jason didn't even know that. And I'm like, yeah, I did. He jumped on my shit. 
Oh. I get excited. I can't help it. Son of a bitch. Uh, so. Poop emoji. How about that? Oh, see? See? Now I can't see because my eyes are filled with tears. <laughs> I started crying that fast. So, uh, like I said before, the... Uh, the the forest is is kind of huge. Um, that's I mean it's called a, a sea of trees for a reason. It's it's twelve square miles, uh, around across wide fucking full. You know it's goddamn twelve square miles. That's crazy, baby. Uh, which is, uh, thirty square kilometers for those of you that have uh, joined the future. <laughs> um, but it's uh, twelve square miles of hardened lava that was uh was all laid down by the last major eruption of Mount Fuji, which was in uh, 864 AD. Wow. So it, it wasn't super recent, but if it were, then there wouldn't be any plant growth there anyway. Mm. Um, so apparently the, uh, the western edge of uh, Oaki Gahara has several caves that, uh, and I, I did pull up the pages for these because I needed to see pictures of these, and they, they are awesome. Uh, there is an ice cave. Huh? There is um, what's what's the other one here? The ice cave is the is certainly the coolest That's one. Awesome. And then there's uh, there's a wind cave, which is uh, you know basically it's it, it's basically one big wind tunnel. The way it's shaped and uh, the way wind travels through it, it, it's really neat. So this place isn't and just these are natural features. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's what's cool about this place is that it's it's not just like a a creepy morose place where people go to fucking you know end it all. Mm -hmm. It's it's a like I said it's a national park. Um, fucking people. There's tourists there every day. Uh, it's it's a popular place for like school trips to go and stuff like that. So you know it it's it's a really cool place. And if I went to Japan, I'd want to see it. Yeah. Um, just not for why it's famous in in our kind of circles of thought right but um it's such Holy a crap. giant it's such a giant place and uh the the porous lava floor of the forest uh actually absorbs sound uh so it's just like a completely eerie sense of of solitude when you get there wow that sounds because you're not hearing crazy yeah because you're not hearing birds and stuff because they're, all that sounds being just soaked up by the forest floor, so it's it's really kind of fucking neat. And um, I, I'm not gonna go super far <clears throat> into to this, so let me just get this out of the way real quick before I tell mm -hmm. you some more numbers and things. But <clears throat> uh, the forest itself has a uh, it's got a, a historical reputation as being a home to uh, yuri or you know ghosts of the dead in Japan. Yeah. Um, in in recent years, it's been known as one of the world's most popular destinations to go kill yourself, and they have signs at uh, a lot of the like the openings to to trails uh -huh. and shit that say, and this is uh, quoted from the sign: "Please think of your parents, siblings, and children. Don't keep it to yourself. Talk about your troubles." And then um, <laughs> it goes on to plea uh, that you should contact the Suicide Prevention Association, which. There's numbers fucking everywhere for it mm -hmm. going into this forest. Now, but is there this, are, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that there are also um, statues and uh, depictions of these these yuri, which are just uh, Japanese folklore uh, ghosts. I mean, they're they're exactly like you know Western ghosts are. Wow. Um, and you the the name itself means uh, faint or dim soul or spirit so faint soul faint spirit so on and so forth um and of course the better known to to everybody else especially small children that watch cartoons as uh yokai which just mean you know japanese ghost mm -hmm. so it's it's you know fabled to say that it's I want full one of those, of those two <laughs> that would be cool as shit. That would be. Would really be cool as shit. But what were you saying? Uh, what I was going to ask is, um, <clears throat> is this also uh, a place that has been, uh, you know, in histor historic times or whatever, has been um, mentioned as some place that the Tengu also live? Mm, I mean, not not specifically, because okay. uh, I mean Tengu are like a super specific thing, you know. Yeah, well, That'd I thought they like, were like um, mountain dwelling. Types of yeah. creatures for the most part, but th th this is more 
just known for the the ghosts of the dead okay. there. So so uh, supernatural, yes. Um, extra supernatural, natural, I guess not. Well, I know in some um, places um, there are actually still uh, signs that are posted to try to keep the Tengu away um, from, sure. from certain places. So yeah, I don't I don't know how how uh, seriously modern day J- Japanese take all that. But, um, you know, it's part of their heritage just as fucking ghost towns and shit like that are part of ours. Hey, you know what I mean? Big foot in this it, area. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's absolutely correct. And uh, don't you put Bigfoot in the same vein as that because he's real. Yeah, Chris. well, I mean, I don't, I don't have any reason to believe the Tengu weren't real. Hey, man, there was that lady that lived in a cabin somewhere and she like was super good friends with a whole family of big feet what and oh yeah they would like go up to her house and she would feed them peanut butter and like pet the little one and like she taught them all english and what? she was a fuck she was a fucking psychotic psychopath living in the forest by herself that thought she was talking to bigfoot bigfoot's not real Chris. what the fuck yeah, i've never heard anything about this Oh, oh, there were, there, I mean, I was about to say there were TV shows, but that kind of makes it sound like, you know, it was like a sitcom or something, which or like you're not I would fucking watch, up. like, like that would be, that would be a pretty cool sitcom, but I mean, hey, it was on the History Channel, oh, okay. Chris, so hey, that must mean it's historical, correct? Biz act. Okay, good, 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 good. Recognize. So, no, t- no uh, Tengu, at least not from what I've read, okay. <clears throat> mostly just the, uh, the yokai and Yuri. Um, so let's get into the geography about it. Like I said, it's, it's at the base of a mountain Uh and its floor is made of fucking volcanic, volcanic rock. Um, so that shit's like tough, like, especially when it's cooled for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and, uh, settled. So like it can't be really penetrated with hand tools is like shovels and picks and shit like that. And, uh, since the forest is super, super dense, um, People have to use uh, plastic tape. Like I, I, I watched a uh, a real short uh, little documentary about the forest uh, made by Vice, which I I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest mm-hmm. everybody checks out because it really puts a uh, a human face. Vice on really the, does a good job with, with they they the really do. Uh, sometimes they're a little heavy handed, mm-hmm. but when they do. <clears throat> Just pieces like this where they're like, hey, there's this thing. We want you to know about it. Here's somebody that knows a lot about it. We're going to talk to them. And here you watch the video. Mm. That shit I love. And that's exactly what this was. They have on this uh, <clears throat> this little short doc, they have this guy who has been a, uh, I mean, for a lo- loss of a better word, has been a, a cadaver finder. Hmm. Uh, in in the forest for uh, over twenty years, so it's his job? this guy, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, as far as I I could tell, I mean, he didn't say that he was like a, I don't know, he didn't do taxes too. He's I like guess. a self proclaimed body hunter, or does he actually get paid to do this? I I think he actually gets paid because he he's for you to find the, the and you and I talked about this beforehand. If we were going to call them uh, suicide victims uh-huh. or suicide committers, I still don't know what I want to call them. So I think I'll I'll remove myself one step even further and just say the uh, the 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 bodies from suicide. <laughs> the lost. So this guy uh, for twenty years has been going into this forest. And following telltale signs, which I'll I'll tell you about it in a second. She's like a tracker, to... huh? Somewhat, yes. Wow. Um, so in 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 the forest, like I said, it's so densely fucking populated with trees that people, you know, use this plastic tape if they're going to go off trail at all, because you will fucking get lost. Oh, I'm sure. Like. Absolutely, one hundred percent. You will fucking get lost. Now, here's a question: so, Are there speaking of getting mm-hmm. lost and shit? Are, are there any like um, 
uh, reported, uh, what you call it, um, like electromagnetic or any kind of anomalies like that that might like throw off electronic devices or uh, the compasses and shit like that? Nothing that I've seen. Okay. It, it's all, it, like I, I'm sure compasses probably, you know, work there and everything. I just, I'm also kind of sure that that's just not something people would bring there because there are trails and things like that mm -hmm. there and as as the guy goes on to say is that most of the people that are going to go off trail are going off trail for a reason uh, yeah and I, that, re that, that reason that. is is usually to end their lives <clears throat> um, oh we got and, lost fuck it <laughs> we're good right so it, one of the the crazy things is is they're they're they park in the parking lot and they're walking up to the uh to the entrance of the forest where they're at and he's like yeah this uh this little van right here has been uh, abandoned here for about uh, you know six months, so I'm guessing that the owner came here, parked, uh, entered the woods right here, and uh, went further in and killed himself. Uh -huh. So just seeing that right away, as soon as they got there, it, it really brought home the fact that this is real. This isn't like some magical story that people have been telling over campfires for years it's it's a real actual place where real actual humans in real actual pain go to end it all mm -hmm. and wow. that just makes the whole thing uh Super a little clearer intense. to me <laughs> right so one neat thing that the guy says is that uh locals don't commit suicide in this forest the locals don't go to the forest huh. Ever since they were really, really young, they were always told that you just don't go anywhere near this place. It's, it's a scary, off-limits place, so they don't go. So it's all people from, you know, just hearing about it through popular culture here and there that decide that's, that's my destination. So they're walking through the forest, and um, they have signs for different, you know, public pathways and things like that. And then they'll have a part of the path that's cordoned off. And he's like, okay, and this is cordoned off because if you cross this line, you will get lost. You will not be able to find your way back to the path. So what do they do? They, <laughs> they go right under this cord to the part where you can get lost in. And then after a couple hundred yards, you start seeing these uh, different multicolored uh, strings of tape that are tied to this tree and go off in this direction and are, are tied to this tree and go off in that direction. And, um, the guy says in it, he's like, usually when you find a tape line somewhere in the forest, that means that if you follow that tape line nine times out of 10, you're going to find a body. Hmm. So are they like and trying to help you help them? Not necessarily. He said that a lot of the tape lines, that are left that far out uh, to as to not get lost are left by people who are still uh, indecisive oh, about okay. whether they want to do it or not. Like so they still want that themselves. lifeline. Yeah, they still want that lifeline to society. Uh, if you know, I, and I can't, I can't believe I almost said chicken out because that's fucking ridiculous. You don't have to be brave to fucking kill yourself. Mm -hmm. That's I, and I, I don't know what you have to be, but it's not fucking brave. Right. So, you know, if they braven up and decide they want to live, then they have that, that line back. Um, but th this guy, like I said, he's been doing this for 20 years. He's been searching these woods uh, for suicide corpses. And in the, the 20 years he's been doing it, he himself, and he's not the only person that does this, has found over 100 suicide victims in, in 20 years. Now, I'm going to get to some numbers. Um, I think they stopped, they stopped really taking numbers in uh, 2010, I think it was. Like, or that's when they stopped uh, releasing the numbers. Yeah, that's probably what And they only took them shortly, uh, you know, uh, officially before that. But so this guy in the video, he, uh, he finds like uh, this tent that was abandoned at the end of a tape line and he tells the cameraman you know stay here for a second i'm gonna go check this out and he goes and he's looking through the thing and he's like okay it's okay it's been abandoned um and then he says something that was that was kind of 
kind of haunting for a second. He's like, um, whoever was here stayed here for a few days. And um, he's like, they only leave the tents if the body hasn't been found yet. Huh. So he's like, so this this abandoned tent here belongs to a corpse that's somewhere in this forest. And they won't pick this tent up until they find the body. Wow. That's nice of them. Yeah. I guess, in a weird well, way. It, it, yeah, it's weird because <clears throat> you could tell it had been abandoned for at, at least a, a week or two because it is an active forest as far as, you know, animals and things like that. There's uh, wild boar and deer and, you know, all kinds of things like that that go through it. So if he had food or something like that, they'd have destroyed it. <clears throat> Interesting. So the one thing that I, I saw, because I, I even didn't really get the chance to finish it. I, I watched it about halfway through. So I really can't wait to watch the rest. But I already had too much to fucking talk about. Right. Um, <clears throat> so they, they find another line, and they're following it. And the guy sees something through the trees on a tree. And, well, well first of all, when he says he's found 100 uh, corpses in the forest, they they show pictures of these these poor, lost fucking souls. And uh, most, most of them are, are hanging victims. Uh, there are also a lot of overdoses mm -hmm. and, and things like that, but, but mostly people go there to hang themselves. And uh, that was another thing that really brought the whole thing fucking home for me was, was seeing those pictures. Because, I mean, whenever you fucking see a dead body, it sucks. Yeah, it does. But whenever, whenever you see someone that lost all hope and turned themselves into that dead body, it sucks just that much more. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, the hanging so, is such a, I mean, I, I mean, I guess it's relatively painless and, you know, quick and all that, but what a hanging. If what a, done correctly, I guess. You what know. an old concept of a, of a way to... Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the, the Japanese don't have access to guns, so they can't shoot themselves. Oh. Um, fucking, I mean, I guess they could slit their wrists as, just as easily as any body that owns a blade but that can also be terrifying and messy you know hanging if done correctly snaps the neck you're gone if not you choke there and suffocate asphyxiate for a minute or two and then you're gone anyway but, but it's still clean you know so i guess that's yeah exactly it's considerate so, of them so we're walking through the forest with this guy and and he finds a new tape line and at the end of the tape line off in the distance through this thick uh this thicket of trees, he sees something on a tree, and he's like, okay, you, you need to hold on for a second. There's definitely something there. And he walks to it by himself, and then he calls the camera crew over. And when they get there, they see that there's this maybe uh, maybe three-and-a-half-foot-tall uh, stuffed, uh, you know, toy uh -huh. figure, uh, like a humanoid toy like a cartoon character made into a fucking uh you know stuffed toy mm -hmm. and it's upside down its feet and hands and head have been nailed to the tree hmm. and when they find this the guy says um that you know people will people will come into the forest and they'll they'll hang or they'll nail effigies to trees um as almost a a curse to just show contempt for society. That's a little creepy. Like, yeah, yeah, I, it, it absolutely is, and um, it's 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 also sad as well. Yeah. You know, but the 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 one super happy thing that comes out of that is that guy walked in there with a stuffed toy and nailed it to a tree. He didn't walk in with a length of rope and jump from a branch. Oh. Oh, okay, so they just go out there as, like, a, a a monument to fuck you, and then they come back and, like, feel Basically, better. So, yeah. like, writing out your feelings and then burning the note type of shit. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trip out to the woods to say, fuck you, society, fuck you, mm -hmm. and then go back to society. But just to get that fucking pressure out, you know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, he, the guy did say, you know, I, they do this to... I, I don't know if if people actually go out there to practice black magic or whatever, but you know he said that they would go out there and do this as a form of curse uh, on society mm -hmm. kind of deal. But you know uh, how seriously that's taken by the people that actually do it. Who would know unless they spoke to somebody about it? True. 
Okay, so that's that's kind of the 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 feeling of the place and and how it must be to uh, certainly to be one of the the poor guys that goes in there day in day out looking for these these lost people you know seriously um so we're gonna get a little more into the the numbers side of the suicides now and and i'm gonna read this straight from wikipedia because um first of all this would have been pretty hard to put in my own words because it's it's very by the books uh no frills this is what we found there Mm -hmm. and um really it's just i think it's just better that I, I read it this way anyway for others. Um, but the forest is sometimes referred to as the most popular site for suicide in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, st- st- apparently, statistics may vary, but there were up to 105 documented suicides a year. Whoa. So um, in 2003, 105 bodies were found, um, exceeding the previous record of 78 in 2002. Hmm. In 2010, the police recorded more than 200 people having attempted suicide in the forest, um, of whom 54 completed the act of suicide. Now, how exactly would they have gotten those numbers? I wonder. Um, Jet, from that kind of guy that walks around looking for bodies, first of no, all? No, I mean, and, and... the number of the bodies, sure, but how, who, how many didn't? Um, you would, I'm sure they would find half-alive people. Or people uh, that, you know, uh, attempted and then failed. rethought and then came out and were caught. I'm sure there's some kind of police presence um, it, around there. There's at least a uh, a National Park Service type, um, you know, worker. So like that after hours there. restrictions and stuff like that. It, yeah, sure. Exactly. So um, apparently suicides are said to increase during March which is, of course, the end of the fiscal year in Japan. Oh. So that's when, you, that's when you find out how well you did that year. Yeah. Um, as of 2011, the most common means of suicide in the forest uh, were hanging and or drug overdoses. In recent years, local officials have stopped publicizing the numbers in an attempt to decrease uh, the forest association with suicide, which is just like I said. They, the more that they put out these numbers, the more it seemed to be a place people wanted to go to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, and I think that's a really smart thing for, uh, for the officials there to do is to stop releasing those numbers. I mean, always collect those numbers, but you know, you, you can't, and not like they were glorifying it by saying this is how many people killed themselves here this year, right. but it almost, it leads a credibility to it being a destination for that. Well, it just which, goes to show you how strong the media really is, even when they're not trying to be. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so uh, this next little part here is kind of interesting. Uh, the rate of suicide has led officials to place a sign at the forest entry written in Japanese, and that's the sign that I, uh, I kind of wrote out there. Mm-hmm. But um, they have annual body searches that are conducted by police, volunteers, and journalists, and they've done this since 1970. So it's been a problem for a long fucking time. Um, And this is one of the theories of where this, and and I hate calling it a trend, (laughs) because it doesn't doesn't fit the, the mold of trendy not what we usually but it, think about at the same fucking time it completely does yeah, to my it definition it does. certainly does and what's the scariest thing about fitting the mold of trendy is that it's almost certain that there are people who had never and would have never contemplated suicide that went there and committed suicide to be one of the number of people that went there to commit suicide right you know what i mean right and everybody should check out it has nothing to do with the suicide forest but there's a, a really crazy interesting uh japanese movie from the 90s that's called uh, suicide club and it not only shows uh japan's fascination with suicide but also its complete and utter willingness to follow a trend hmm. <laughs> um, and, and it mixes those two things together in a gory, uh, sometimes funny, sometimes sad experience 
with a uh, with like a, a crime thriller twist. Interesting. So check it out if you can. It, it's super good. But so the uh, the site's popularity had been attributed to. Um, I'm gonna try to get this guy's name right. Um, uh, Sichiro, uh, Sichiko Matsumoto. Okay. Um, and his 1960 novel, uh, uh, Kuroi Jukai. <laughs> I'm I'm tired and my tongue doesn't want to work with me today, so I'm just gonna read it like a dumb American for now. Um, but that translates to the Black Sea of Trees. Now I've I've done some uh, some research into this author. And this book, um, the thing about the book <clears throat> is that it's not even placed on his Wikipedia for his note, uh, not even on under his notable works. It's not there. Huh. Now he did write. He did write this book. I've found a list. It's it's Japanese only, as far as I can tell. It hasn't, at least at this date, been translated into English. Um, cause there were a lot of people saying, Hey, does anybody have a fucking translation of this? I, I gotta read it. I need to know more about it. Um, and of course the writer himself, his, his, his Wikipedia is, well, no, this isn't the one that's translated in, into English from Japanese. That is the book itself's thing. Cause I was going to go a little bit further into the book itself since people think it may have started the trend, mm -hmm. but the uh, Google Translate is not very good. Right. <laughs> and it was kind of a... You know how Japanese words have uh, different he's and she's. Yeah. But there's like 30 of them. And sometimes she can mean she or it can mean sister or it can mean uh, aunt or, you know, shit like yeah. that. So it, I wanted to try to figure it out just to give a synopsis. But it was just too fucking weird and I couldn't fucking do it. <laughs> so so if you're really interested in checking out uh the book uh The Black Sea of Trees, I suggest doing your own research into it because it it did sound really cool. It, this guy was the father of uh true crime novelization in or or not really true crime novelization, but crime fiction huh. in in Japan after World War 2. Cool. He fucking completely created um that whole genre in japan where he uh he got he he did away with uh the formulaic plot devices that other crime authors used like uh puzzles and weird things like that right like this this dude was one of the first that he took uh ordinary life and human psychology and used it to write stories that were not only more believable but just more relatable i love the whole puzzle thing though it is a cool concept it, it's cool, cool. Angle. <clears throat> it is cool but but i don't want it in my my real to life crime thriller. Mm -hmm. you know like i want mystery and i want uh i want questions and i want you know i want a whodunit but i don't want I don't want to fucking have to do math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, he also, in his writing, um, helped spread post-war nihilism. Um, really? Which, yeah. Like, this dude was, he was dark, man. Like, he... Fucking nihilist. I'm guessed, <laughs> I, I couldn't really find anything about his, what he did uh, during the war uh, and things like that. I mean, because he was born in 1909, so he he certainly lived through the war. I don't know if he fought in it or what, but his writings afterwards definitely reflect the the national sentiment, where it's just like, fuck, man. I mean, you know, I mean, say what you want about the tenets of national socialism, dude. At least it's an ethos. <laughs> 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 and don't get me started on this. Oh, keeping an amphibian rodent within the city you know for domestic that ain't legal oh, either man. dude i needed that laugh real quick because shit was like I, forget about the fucking I, toe <laughs> <laughs> sorry okay i'll stop <laughs> dude i it's funny because i hadn't seen that movie in years and years and years and years and years and then i saw it like a month ago 
So that's super fresh in my head. <laughs> I love it. But uh, like picking this, I I don't think I expected this topic to be like a rollicking, fucking fun, good laugh a second time. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I often depress myself during these episodes, Chris. Right, right. Well, by just that happens. by just remembering how fucking terrible humanity can Shit be. Shit is crazy. You know? But what's this isn't about hu humanity being terrible. This is about humanity giving the fuck up. Yeah, uh, well, the, the the high expression it's, it is still about humanity being terrible because the high expectations that that people set for themselves and everyone else who has nothing you know who isn't very true them very true. you they, know it, it incubates that feeling of hope exactly it's fine for you to set high goals for yourself and all that it's fine for you to encourage and to teach and uh, you know what i mean to 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 try to bring people up to your level and all that all of that shit is great but it's psychologically not only damaging but crippling to some people when when the restrictions on how they can get there and and all of that kind of shit is so intense that yeah the the feeling of hopelessness i can imagine is just it's overwhelming i can yeah exactly just, and and this is just based this is just my opinion based on all the anime that I've watched and seen, you know, all <laughs> these characters that are just, they, they leave school to go to school because they have cram school for college or, you know what I mean? And it's just, <laughs> I'm like, God damn, they go straight home and study all night and lock themselves in their rooms, all this yeah, kind of shit. And, and they go to school fucking six days a week instead of five. Man. And they have school fucking almost year round they they don't have months off for summer and shit like Dude, that sea level students are our like magna cum laude type fucking you know what i mean our, our yeah. valedictorians are, are their sea level students type of shit it's it blows my mind i i don't i don't know i'm too lazy for all that shit i no i i, I hear mean, you i hear you i i ba i barely fucking uh passed american high school fucking so hell. I, I can only imagine. But, you know, I, I wanted to start this episode by, and I completely forgot, by saying, hey, you know what, Chris? I finally fucking did a, a bunch of research, and I think I might feel not fucking completely destroyed by the end of this episode. <laughs> but it it didn't even fucking take to the end of the fucking episode, because I, I've been completely goddamn destroyed for, I don't know, 20 minutes now? Ah, fine, I caught And I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm trying to... I'm trying to keep this upbeat, but how do you, you know? Yeah. So, um, and, and I see now that we are running a little long, so I, I want to yeah, touch okay, on uh, just two, two, two more quick things. Um, well, to finish off, uh, Sichko here, um, he was just like a super prolific, uh, he, he was, he wrote all kinds of shit that's beloved by Japanese and non-Japanese, but mostly Japanese. Mm -hmm. But uh, he won all kinds of awards um, uh, for for writing mysteries and all these these awesome things. Um, his, just if people out there want to read something of his that was translated and is completely just beloved and renowned, um, his most acclaimed detective novel is called Ten to Sen. So T E N to the letter i mean the number two no it's not the number two jason jesus christ get it together <laughs> 10 the word two mm -hmm. t-o and then sen s-e-n oh. so um if you want to check this guy out and you think that uh you would enjoy his writing because I, I do want to read something of his because he sounds like he was he was fucking super popular for a reason mm -hmm. and uh i really do want to read his work so Check that out if you can. If you can get your hands on it, check it out. Kick ass. So in the process of, uh, of all of my research here, I found this other book that has been found by some of the, uh, the suicide corpses. Huh. And uh, I want to touch on this just super, super, super fucking light because I, as... As much of a fucking downer as suicide is, I want to do an entire episode on this book. Uh, it's a, a Japanese only book. Well, my interest um, is peaked. It is. It's called the Complete Manual of Suicide. Okay, that's it weird. Was, uh, yeah. 
So, I mean, and that's why they found it with some of the uh, bodies. But it was published in 93. It sold more than a million copies. And uh, in the postscript in the book, the, the author says, to think that at the worst crucial moment one can escape from the pain by committing suicide. One can live for the moment easier. So by distributing this book, I want to make this stifling society an easier place to live in. The aim of this book, uh, well, this is the aim of this book, and I never intend to encourage readers to commit suicide. So what I think he's saying by that is that I, I wrote this book, uh, and, and the, the purpose of this book is to list different types of suicides, mm -hmm. uh, list how painful each one would be, how messy each one would be, uh, the kind of corpse you would leave for your family, um, how long they would take, how easy it is to pull off, hmm. shit like this. Wow. And he, he, yeah, they outlawed it in a bunch of places. He got a lot of blowback. He's like, because it's called the fucking complete manual of fucking suicide. Yeah. Like, you're teaching people how to fucking commit suicide. But in his shit there, I, I, I believe him. I believe him saying that our fucking society is so goddamn suffocating that just knowing that suicide is an option that no one could ever take away from you. Mm -hmm. Not acting on it, but just knowing that that's something that they didn't give you that they can't fucking take away. Like, you know, you can take that and start looking differently at the world that you live in. Fair enough. So I thought it was super neat. And maybe I'm just so fucking jaded by now that that's what I want to think. Oh, well, that's <laughs> but, happened uh, several. So, so wait, it's it's actually kind of. Um, even though that's not what he wanted it to be, it's actually kind of become part of the trend, like part of the prep for following the trend is to go get this book in a, in a way. Bring see, it out there I, with I you. Didn't, I, did, I didn't even really want to look into the book that much. Um, so I don't know. Like I kind of read the public reaction where it was censored and or completely banned and things like that. And it's, it's 11 uh, chapters and their titles. Which, just super quick, I'm going to read the 11 chapters mm -hmm. because they're all just different types of suicides. Mm -hmm. There's overdosing, hanging, self-defenstration, which I had to look up and found out is throwing yourself out of a window or off a building. Oh, okay. Um, slashing the wrists and car uh, carotid artery, mm -hmm. car collisions, gas poisonings, electrocution, Drowning, self-immolation, which of course is burning yourself to death, <sighs> uh, freezing, and then last but not least, miscellaneous. So yeah, I'm sure there's plenty the, of those. Yeah, so those are the different things he goes through, and like I said, he talks about how much it hurts, fucking how messy it is, fucking how expensive it is, all that crazy shit. Uh -huh. So I want to do a whole, like maybe even a mini episode about it, but I want that to be its own thing because I think that's. <clears throat> Uh, weird and serious enough to 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 warrant it. Um, well, if that it has become part of the trend, I can tell you it's not the first time that something like that has happened. Where, and I can't think of the the uh, my an example off the top of my head, but I know this to be true. Where somebody created something that was could have been misconstrued or was misconstrued by the mass population as to being you know and then he had to come out and say this is not what i wanted this to be right and, but of course absolutely. people said oh hey that's cool hey, uh, fucking go no yeah follow this a a absolutely but once you put out a, a public work it, it doesn't matter what you wanted it to be anymore it's 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 uh interpreted by whoever uh consumes your work and it's theirs now. right uh, so uh, tough tough shit buddy. yeah and this statement is not to uh uh you know um What's the word? Uh, insult the the suicide um, people or people who right. do go through with it or whatever. But um, right. yeah, in, in in any of these sort of scenarios where the trend catches on, that is just an absolutely horrible thing to do. Um, I mean, and it could be big or small. It's anything. Like like you know that whole knockout game that was going on for a while. Just god damn it, man! It really, uh, I mean. I realize that not everybody can be a lion. You know, we got to have sheep too. I get it. But, ah, fuck, man. Never mind. Right. I don't really have anything. Honestly, it was that <laughs> statement wasn't going anywhere. Just uh, fuck, man. Damn. Yeah, just, 
Hey, get, talk to somebody. Man. Get some help. No, man. it's Tomorrow... not even about the suicide. I'm just. I'm mainly talking about the just following trends that are clearly retarded and fucking. Yeah. Uh, just uh, uh, anti. Uh, society and community and and don't get me wrong you know punk fucking uh, anarchy blah 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 uh, whatever i was a fucking rebellious teen too but Mm -hmm. god damn it man it's okay to be rebellious and not be a fucking sheep don't be a fucking sheep yeah and 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 i tell you what fucking punk is a trend and so is every other with fucking way of life i mean everything is you know there's that that whole so you you can be yourself. Like that's the most important thing that anyone in this fucking world can be is themselves. Yeah. Even if your group of friends fucking dresses a certain way and listens to a certain kind of music and lives a certain kind of lifestyle, as long as you can fucking take solace in the fact that that you are your own individual person that thinks for themselves, then you've got nothing to worry about because trends are trends for reasons. Mm-hmm. Like trends are followed because it's popular stuff that people like. And for you to buck a trend for the sake of hating trends yeah. is kind of the whole reason trends survive in the first place. Right, and it's because... equally as retarded as following one just for the sake of following right. one. <laughs> exactly. So as long as you can be yourself and like what you like and not hate on other people for liking what they like, fucking everybody's going to be cool, man. Everybody's going to be super duper fucking chill. And that's all we need. That's all we need is everybody to be fucking super chill. I mean, I can't lie. I so, do still kind of hate on some people for liking dumb shit that, well, shit that I think is dumb, but. Oh, so do I. You, you know, know who I hate the most, Chris? I think that's just human is fucking, I hate, I hate those fucking douchebags that uh, walk around with uh, those fucking vape boxes that fucking suck on that son of a bitch <laughs> and blow out a gigantic fucking cloud of smoke. Fuck them and their stupid fucking vape holes. Yeah. You know what, Chris? I'm holding my goddamn vape box in my hand right now. You know what I'm ashamed to fucking do in public? I'm yeah. fucking ashamed to use this fucking goddamn vape box, Chris. But you know what? I use it because I'm trying to fucking quit smoking cigarettes. But that doesn't mean that I can't still hate those fucking cocksucker fucks that do that. Yeah, I just won't use it while I'm in line or, you know, <laughs> stuff like that where I'm going to fog out a whole I, bunch of people. <laughs> When, when I use it, I try not to have the look on my face as if to say, that's right. Mm-hmm. You want to suck my dick. <laughs> I know it. You know it. We all fucking know it. Because that's the fucking face they have. They're like, did you just see the amazing cloud that I just blew out? It, that was inside uh-huh. me. And, and now, it's, <laughs> now it's in the fucking the nasal cavities of everyone in this goddamn city. You could be Am I not? Too. That's right. There's Am I not see. a man? <laughs> oh, so fuck those people. Fuck. Agreed. Them. They should go to Japan. High five. So, um, <laughs> so the the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about here, because like I said, it's it's a mysterious fucking crazy spot in the world where people go to kill themselves. Mm. There's not all there. There's hey, you know, they 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 used to fucking drop old people there, and uh, hey, there there's probably uh, like um, you know, ghosts and stuff maybe, but. In all actuality, it's just a, a, a secluded, quiet place. And, I mean, that's my theory, is it's a secluded, quiet place where somebody can go to end it all without being interrupted. Extra quiet. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, the last things I really found were, like, places that, uh, like, uh, pop culture that included the forest. Uh-huh. Um, and there's nothing notable like like literally nothing like in one transformer show that f- the forest was the uh the home base of like the decepticons or some shit like that yeah. like it had nothing to do with the 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 fable of the forest um the one thing that the one name that i i truly saw and was like oh okay was uh it, it's in a fatal frame game which hmm. i know of fatal frame never fucking oh. played fatal frame that was the That's one where the you one get where to be the director of the horror movie, huh? Well, I, I don't know. Never played a Fatal Frame. I, think I, I just know that, that. you're your Japanese schoolgirls with a camera that fights ghosts by taking pictures of the camera. Oh, okay. That's not what I was thinking at all, but all right. Fair. So that's, hey, man, that's, uh, that's the end of my fucking thought process and uh, depression on Aokigahara. That was, uh, yeah, that was really interesting, man. I, um, 
I'm really curious to go. I want to check it out. There's so many questions. I don't want to stay there for the rest of my non life, don't get right. me wrong, but I would like to go see it. <laughs> there, there's so many question marks about it. Mm-hmm. And, and and really the only thing that logically it can be brought down to is the fact that it's a trendy fucking place to off yourself. Um, right, but I mean, for hundreds of years, like uh, hundreds of years ago, mm-hmm. this this would have had to have been, like, uh, you know, things had to things got around by word of mouth hundreds of years ago. Yeah, right. So, well, we found body we found bodies there for a long time. Uh, like I said, a lot of people thought that 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 dude's uh, uh, Kuroi Jakai book mm-hmm. from 1960 started the 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 site's popularity. But, I see. Uh, you know, that there, there's just there's suicide there that just predates the novel's publication. So, uh, and then the, and also uh, the uh, the the abasut uh, the abasut uh, the dropping off of old people to fucking mm-hmm. never see him again. Um, everything that I found mentioned that for the forest, but everything that I found also added the word may have been practiced. Oh. <laughs> Me. And but it, they all say may have been practiced there in ch- into the 19th century. So that seems to imply that it it was certainly practiced there, and we may have even been found finding bodies uh, of uh, I'm going to say victims mm-hmm. of this uh, up until the 1800s. <clears throat> um, so, but it, it they, so you know it could be bodies from that. Um, I mean, it could it could be all kinds of shit, you know. Yeah. It could just be fucking people that went into that forest and fucking got lost as shit, and it ended up dying. And then people were like, "Holy crap! There's a lot of dead bodies in that fucking forest." Yeah, because it's fucking it's a goddamn endless maze of the same fucking goddamn view, no matter where you look. Right. So so good luck, fucker. But. Maybe people are like, huh, I wonder if all those people are going in there uh, specifically to kill themselves. I'm not super happy today. Maybe I'll go fucking take a try. Wow. What <sighs> so mindset. anyway, 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 Chris. Yes, sir. Can you, I need you to tell me something. Mm-hmm. First, I need you to tell me something that we completely forgot to even mention the last episode, which is what the fuck is our email. Oh, shit. I guess we did. I'm here racking my brain like, oh, my God, what did we forget to talk about? Uh, yeah, no, our, our email is see no, hear no, speak no pod at gmail.com. Hit you us up. You are correct, sir. Please, we, especially now, man, I just, fuck, man, I just need somebody to talk to. <laughs> <sighs> but secondly... Uh, hey man, hit me with what you learned today. Well, um, yeah, okay, so I learned today that, um, if you don't know the number to the Japanese suicide hotline, you can find it on signs all around Aokigahara Park, uh, but other than that, I also learned that, um, I would like to, uh, create an effigy and go and nail it upside down. In a forest. That's right. It's, fuck it's society. Nice, I'm down with that it. sentiment. I am down with fuck polite society and goddamn double fuck society in general. You know? I mean, th- there but, are good points about it, but for the most part, I'm I'm not a big fan. So, <clears throat> right. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think putting together, you know, and for us uh, growing up in New Orleans and stuff like that, it's it's basically a voodoo doll, although except that it's not yeah. of a of a person or whatever specifically right, you know right, we're right. not trying to hurt anybody but at the same time we know how to build voodoo voodoo dolls for sure and, and right. i'm sure we have the um imagination to be able to set it up <laughs> to say fuck whatever part of society we deem necessary that's right like, See, i'm gonna but put bit... cowboy boots on mine <laughs> i'm gonna put a uh, like a what are they what are they called? the the things that you get at little kids parties that you you blow in and it like unrolls and like makes the noise at the, at the end. Yeah, no, you son of a bitch, <laughs> no, kid kids parties, man, the fucking thing you put in your mouth and you blow on it, it's like rolled up paper and it fucking oh, fills with air. Yeah, so yeah, it un- yeah, okay, okay, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, I was way off. Yeah, I was way off. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna go buy like a hundred pack of those and just. Every day, new one hanging out my mouth. 
<laughs> and that's that's how you start trends, people. That's how you you break the cycle of following and start leading. I wonder if I could because... design one of those things to actually like have the head of a dick on the end, so to have like a new fun toy to sell for bachelor part bachelorette parties and shit like that. But I would say that not only um, could you do that, but that it would probably be one of the easiest things you've ever done in your entire life. I think I'm going to put some uh, effort into that because I think it would sell really well. And, and uh, if you... And now I'm going to have to do the used, poor man's patent because I just gave my idea away on fucking air. Like a dumbass. I'll, I'll, I'll bleep it all out. But I will say this and leave this in, is that if you use a photorealistic likeness uh -huh. of Justin, Justin Bieber's wedding, <laughs> man, the checks won't stop rolling in. Word. That's what I'll say. I'm That's sure say. he would he would approve of such a product. You know, I doubt it. <laughs> you don't think so? No. Like, I think uh, he's enough of, I'm, of a of a I mean, narcissist to fucking be okay with that. There's one there's one thing to be proud of your wang. There's another thing to like have it in every uh soon to be weds come on man Jackie his little boy songs can't go on forever he's got to turn the tables and make money somewhere else from some other angle i don't know man why not dude's, make money on your dick like dude's probably got a, a good i mean okay let's just say justin bieber's probably well off i'm sure and that we that we should probably not slander him on our show because um we are not that, uh, fair enough. Okay, that's fine. But you know, mm -hmm. money doesn't make. The but man. anyway, <laughs> so it, in in closing, to to completely fucking close the book and end the chapter. Stop on, talking about dick. Uh, uh huh. Uh, yeah, of Oaki Gahara um, and suicide in general is that um, if you if your problem with society is that everyone is striving for something that you can't hope to achieve, mm -hmm. then you have to be the one. To, to instead of trying your best and never succeeding in following the trend, you have to be the one that breaks and starts your own. Right. You have to be the one that goes your own way and does it, it just you have to find what makes you fucking happy and something that because you know why I wake up every single day with a smile on my face, Chris, is because I know that today Today in particular, I'm gonna fucking. <laughs> I'm gonna. Yeah, you didn't give me the chance earlier. You knew so I was fuck gonna yourself. Say so up. go ahead. I every single day I wake up and I think to myself, today I'm gonna learn something that I didn't fucking know yesterday, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that is good enough for me. Mm -hmm. Even if it's a, a word, if I fucking buy a Snapple and learn that fucking something stupid is stupid for a really long time, and wow, that's that's. Great. I love it. That's what I, I need in my life. I need a new something every day. But that is why I get up every day, because that's worth it to me. You find something worth it to you to wake up with a smile on your face every day, and your life's going to fucking rule, too. Oh, by the way, speaking of, um, ducks can't fart. I don't know if you knew that, but it's true. They also have very painful corkscrew penises. Woo! Mm -hmm. That's special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have this park uh, here in the uh, in 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 Metairie, huh. which is in the uh, New Orleans area. That's a fucking gang Laughing. rapists. Yeah, it, it's called Laugh in Your Park, and uh, I I once witnessed uh, duck coitus, and it looked like the most painful thing. On was Earth. it in the water or out of the water? Oh no, no man, it was it was right next to my car. Oh shit, I've never seen it out yeah. on land. I saw it. Oh, they were. They were exhibitionist ducks. Wow, dude. And, uh, I, but it certainly I, seemed like it wasn't consensual. I saw it in the water, and there were six males circling around one oh. female, oh. and they were taking turns, jumping on her back and fucking pushing her head under the water oh, oh, okay. while they were are we, handling Wait, are we, talking ab are we talking about ducks, or are we talking about Jody Foster? <laughs> there she is again. That's... Skinny little bitch. Ah, oh, man. Oh, no, this was man. Okay, straight so... up like fucking Mallard gang rape. It was intense. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we ever need to say gang rape on the show again. That makes me feel dirty. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Even if it was ducks, stupid ducks being all non-consensual and forceful. And 
You've just listened to another riveting episode of See No, Hear No, Speak No. UFOs, conspiracies, and murder. And suicide, I've apparently. Been... Yeah, oh God, it's all just dark. It's all just darkness and it won't leave. <laughs> I've been Jason Rambo. I'm going to go fucking somewhere else and be happy now. I've been Chris Barrios, and I think I'm going to go smoke a bowl. All righty. Well, Chris, you enjoy your bowls. So. <laughs> I will. I'll take you with me if I if I can. I don't know, man. I got I got things to think about. Fine. Blacker. <laughs> All right. So, you ready to end this? We're going to count to three together. You ready? I'm going to count up to three, and then we're going to count back from three. You ready? What? One. Why would we two, do that? Three. Three. Two. No, I'm just joking. Fuck <laughs> Bye, kids. Bye. Click. Whatever makes you happy, whatever you want, so fucking special, 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 special. I wish I was special.